Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokey Aim here with part of the finals, well, one part of many of the finals of the Smogon Premier League. We have the Wi-Fi Wolfpack versus the Team Raiders. Trosco is on the Wi-Fi Wolfpack as Gondra is on the Raiders. Now, um, I'm not able to catch most of these live, but I'll throughout this weekend and probably going into Monday, I'll be uh, recording as many as possible, putting them all up on the channel when I can and uh, just having you guys have these replays to watch. So again, this is the finals of the Small on Premier League. I do apologize, by the way, for late videos. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I had some errands to run with the wedding this morning. Uh, a lot of stuff happening. My wedding's in June, so I got a, got a lot of stuff to prep, but got it all done, finally back home. Time to settle in, watch this tournament replay, commentate it. Let me promote my socks, because they have two days left. You guys are killing it. Like I said, my goal was 15, we're at 123, that's amazing. Uh, but yeah, there are two days left. You guys want to pick them up, and let's get into this. So look at Team Preview first, of course, and um, as we keep going, I'll be uploading them. Fear also played Coolio, and that's a really good game just because of the two players uh, playing it. But again, my uh, I don't feel comfortable commentating a GSC game that I'm not playing live because I can tell you my thought process live, but I might not be able to accurately portray um, the dudes playing. So anyway, uh, Trosco has a Hoopa. Now, if we know anything about Hoopa, and Gondra has balance, if we know anything about Hoopa, Hoopa is a balance breaker. Uh, I think the only thing that could have been better uh, versus Gondra's team than Hoopa would have been Kiram Black, just because he can't kill that Pokemon at all with his squad, whereas Hoopa, he actually has two U-turners that can pick it off. So, Hoopa's a giant problem. They both brought Gastrodon, funnily enough, and they both brought the same Gastrodon, too. Same form. What is that? East? Yep. No, West Coast? I'm sorry, Chris. I'm from the East Coast, so that's all right. Uh, Scizor is interesting, especially because it can U-turn in and pretty much Scizor baits in, or not even baits in, but it, uh, Gondra pretty much has to switch into something like um, Tornadus, Landorus, or even Heatran, and he basically has switches to take advantage of that. If it's Heatran, uh, Lando, Gastro, his own Heatran, uh, and obviously Hoopa, depending on the set. Um... And likewise, like if it's Tornadus, he can always go Gastrodon, which hard walls it unless it's running Taunt. Uh, Heatran, which takes it on unless it's like really offensive and Heatran's uh, low. And uh, obviously Tapu Koko. But uh, speaking of Tapu Koko, uh, Tapu Koko, Tapu Koko, I think Tapu Koko is actually the most useless Pokemon in this game. Uh, funnily enough, just because he does have a Gastrodon, which is hard walls it. And like I said, that Hoopa is going to be a problem whether it's Specs or Ben. I know what it is, but this is just my thought process when I see Team Preview. Um, Stealth Rocker, uh, looking how his team doesn't really have much speed control, I'm going to think that Lanner is, is Choice Scarf, and that Stealth Rocker is either uh, Heat Rent, which could also be Choice in some sort of way, or uh, Clef, Mowile, Sword Dance Offensive, and let's just get into it. So, uh, we see a Lanner lead versus Tapu Koko. We do see Intimidate go off before the Electric Terrain, so we know that this Lanner is Choice Scarf. Smart to go for U-turn right there. The most common set on Tapu Koko these days is Shukabari HP Ice. So, just makes the really safe play right now going out to Gastron. And the thing about this Gastron is, and I, I did not mention this in Team Preview, this is a really big problem for Trosco's team, especially because he got it in so early. He basically gets to either throw off whatever attack he wants, more than likely a Toxic, just because he has his own Gastron. But Scalds, he doesn't appreciate switching into scissor lanterns don't appreciate burns earthquake heat rain goes down hoopa gets to a kill by earthquake also doesn't appreciate a skull burn if it is um if it is a banded hoopa and not specs so gets off a really early toxic turn two on gashadon that's amazing for gondra's team so he spent out to turn is, um he did have a he did have a clefable right he did have a clefable right here uh, which should have easily came in on the Toxic coming out, the very predictable Toxic. But I agree with Gondra's play right here. I think this was a good mid-ground play because since Clefable was so obvious, Trosco could have made a double into um, potentially Banded Hoopa if it was Gunk Shot, Heat Ran to get up Rocks, uh, or Scizor, and this just took advantage of whatever came in and gave him momentum from there. Plus, it still gives him momentum either way and racks up Poison if Gastrodon wants to stay in. So, Tapu Koko comes out. Um, Gondra's just going to go right for that U-turn, bring back in Landorus. Shookaberry is still gonna protect this uh this coco though but he has to go right back out into gastrodon as uh Trosco does read the u-turn and goes right for Rue. so now he's at full hp awesome you can just throw off an earthquake here though with his gastrodon like i said this gastrodon is a huge problem for Trosco as um it's not as much of a problem for gondra because he has clefable which has obviously magic guard doesn't care about toxic and can infinitely come in on it so gets in clefable right here and every single time that gastrodon comes in it's a huge problem this does allow gondra to actually go for his rocks as lanners is going to come out Lenders could be Choice Scarf, it could be anything. Uh, obstacle out to Tornadus, as we do see the Defog. So, um, 
Tornadus was an interesting play there because uh, Landers came right in on it came right in on Clefable. So what I would have thought about that is obviously, I mean, he could obviously like get rid of the hazards with Defog, but I would have thought about potentially Supersonic Sky Strike coming out. Uh, but it could also be Scarf Lantern, especially because his defog doesn't have to necessarily be defensive. But we do see a Tornadus come in, and we're just going to see again him just keeping up offensive momentum, uh, getting the U turn, regardless if he stayed or not, and getting in Gastrodon. And once again, just being that huge problem. Every single time Gastrodon comes in, it forces a recover uh, from his own Gastrodon. Doubles down to Lantern, which covered um, a potential Hoopa switching right there as well, as he can get off a U turn, get back in Clefable, and pretty much. Rack of that poison and allow him to get up rocks again if he wants. So his heat rain is going to come out from Chaska's side. So we do see rocks. Heat rain does come out. We see the Gastrodon come back in. If this is not Toxic Tran or Bloom Doom, Gastrodon is a full on counter. And we do see him go for rocks. So again, uh, this Gastrodon is even more of a threat now because since he did get up rocks himself, he's less pressured um, or less likely to want to defog. At least immediately, anyway. So Gastrodon comes out. We're probably going to see another earthquake come out on the Gastrodon. Honestly, Gondra does not have to make any. Uh, any predictions at that point? Like I said, such a huge problem for him to deal with. So, brings in Clef as the uh, Gastrodon is going to waste another recover. Uh, so that's really important as well. We're going to wear that down, and we are going to see the Clefable throw off a Wish. So it's Magic Art Clefable Wish, which is amazing too, because it means even if this Scizor has knockoff, um, this Heat Rain, if it's not a Z move, obviously it could be Z move. Uh, this Heat Rain just gets to repeatedly come in, and we do see a U turn. So everything we know about U turn Scizor, U turn Scizor doesn't typically run superpower. So that we can just assume that the Scizor can't touch this Heat Rain right now. Uh, Bullet Punch, U turn, Roost, Swords Dance is a set we're thinking. Could also be Hidden Power Ice because that is his uh, Zygarde switching. Hidden Power Fire also makes sense because it is a Kartana switching, but Hidden Power Ice for the most part, 2 KOs a Kartana anyway. So Hoopa comes out. This giant threat Hoopa. It's time to see if it's Specs or Bandit. And right now we find out that that man is Choice Ban Hoopa. So that Pokemon, whenever it gets a free switching, it gets a KO. Now Chosko is going to double out into or switch out into his Heat Ran right now. More than likely expecting him to want to go for the Sucker Punch, uh, as that would be able to knock out um, Koopa at minus one, otherwise Mala doesn't have speed. Gondra actually makes a more aggressive play and goes for the Fire Fang here, opting to predict the Scizor to want to come out uh, since Mawal is in range of Bullet Punch and would also be able to avoid the um, avoid Sucker Punch uh, by going out to that. But we do see the Fire Fang. Uh, Hiran is unfortunately going to miss the Magma Storm on the Gastrodon. I honestly don't think any HP on this Gastrodon matters, but it does suck that he misses because it still would have forced Gastrodon to recover, if anything. And maybe if he had like Subtoxic, could have risked it right there, but throws off another earthquake as um, as Gastrodon does come out, and again just gives him the momentum. It allows him to go right back out into Clefable. He can eat the skulls and just wear down this Gastrodon with poison. Like right now, Gastrodon cannot come in on two earthquakes. Uh, it's forced to go for recover if it wants to, and um, Gondra just making the play uh, either to expect Heat Run to want to come out, maybe to go for knockoff, or even Scizor might bluff the. Uh, Heat wave. But Scissor does come right out on the U turn as this does allow him the Heat Ran. And now Heat Ran, uh, if it's a more offensive variant, could go for Earth Power here or anything like that. But opts to go for Magma Storm. Really smart again because Gastrodon is not that healthy. And uh, Magma Storm plus Poison, uh, plus depending on his Z move, that might actually knock out a uh, Gastrodon. Or if he has Taunt too. Like for example, if Gastrodon comes in, it's really low. Uh, Trosco is more than likely to go for Taunt, um, go for Recover there. So. Uh, he ran could always go for taunt, play the mind games, and basically make it so when Gastron comes in again and gets KO. But uh, hits the Magma Storm on the Lanarus. Uh, Lanarus is running the Hidden Power Ice. We already did see Defog on Lanarus. Um, we know that this is more than likely Scarf. Now, just for his speed control. Uh, if we saw Defog and we see Hidden Power Ice here, we know U Turn and Earthquake are always on the set, right? U Turn and Earthquake are always on Scarf Lanterns. And Hidden Power Ice is a lot more common than Explosion or Stone Edge or even Knock Off these days uh, for opposing Lanterns and obviously Zygarde. So, Ops to go out to Tornadus right there, which can pivot in on the set. And this allows Tornadus to either double out or go for U Turn. And just smart play uh, decides to double back out into Clefable, get back his Regenerator and whatnot. So, Gastron's going to come out yet again. On this heat ran, as again, he does unfortunately miss a Magma Storm. Wouldn't have done too much, but like again, it would still force potentially a recover. And this allows Gastrodon to uh, go for the Earthquake and even throw off a Scald here if he wants to. Um, so Trosco taking advantage of that, decides to U-turn out into his own Gastrodon, this giving him the optimal turn to recover, uh, because obviously Storm Drain um, makes him immune to that Scald. And also stopping his own Gastrodon from recovering. It makes a really, really, really good play right there. Predicts the Scizor, uh, predicts the Clefable to want to come out because it's his best play. And this gives him a free Roost with Scizor, but at the same time, it also potentially gives Clefable a Wish or even just Hard Heat Ren. Hard Heat Ren is also a more aggressive play, especially with the HP that the Gastrodon is at. We only see it at 70%. So 
Um, again, if it is Z Tectonic Rage, which I think it might be, just based on his team. Um, if it is Z Tectonic Rage to deal with Tox Specs, which is a little bit of an issue, obviously, uh, and you have Defog on potentially Tornadus to deal with that. Um, Magma Storm into Poison with Stealth Rock does put Gastrod on your range of that uh, Z move. So, um, Bagandra ends up making a more aggressive play and going for Earth Power right here, predicting the Heat Rain to come out. Uh, so that's not what ended up happening. Obviously, Landers came out right there. This does give him top of Koku. He does opt to double right there out into his Tornadus. So is trying to get a little bit more momentum right here. But at the end of the day, all it's really giving is uh, Gondra recovery, but makes another great double out into the Hoopa. Now, this Hoopa could easily go for Choice Band Gunk Shot, and that's going to blow Clefable away. So Gondra is going to take the defensive approach and go Landers really fast, by the way, as Trosco reads that exceptionally well and goes right for the Ice Punch. That was a beautiful play on his part right there. Um, I think he acknowledged the fact that matchup-wise, he's in the back. He's easily in the back, especially from turn two, the fact that his own Gastrodon was poisoned. So that was a really good play, and I think that's one of the opportunities or one of the times where making an aggressive play is necessary because you're really in the back at Team Preview. So. Nice, just goes heat rain on the U-turn as this allows him to bring out Gastrodon one more time. Gastrodon can either just again, just go for Earthquake if it wants to, or even um, Scald. Recover is fine as well. Uh, Ops to just go for the recover right there as Scizor is going to come out and Ops to go for SD. Uh, kind of a last ditch stand really because Scald has the potential to burn. Uh, he does go heat rain right there though because he doesn't want to take the plus two U-turn. Even though he could recover on top of Coco, it's still smart to go here, and, and this does force the lander sack right there as he does go for Magma Storm. So Hoopa comes right back out, and once again, actually, no, 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 that's not this turn, not this turn. Ops to go for the Hyperspace Fury. Still smart. I mean, it would pretty much pick up a KO right there on here in uh, Tornadus, and Gastrodon would get blown away too because this but F Gastrodon. So this does allow the Tornadus to come out, and uh, Hoopa will obviously fall down to a U-turn. So it allows him to U-turn out into his Gastrodon. And Gastrodon, even though Gondra's down two Pokemon, he is far from out, especially because Gastrodon can freely go for the Earthquake right here, break that Shuckaberry on the top of Coco, and pretty much mean that next time Earthquake is going to knock him out. Ops to go for Scald here, though, uh, just in case Trosco wants to go out into Scizor, um, just to try and burn it. Ends up going for it, though, on Gastrodon coming in, and uh, again, it does allow Tornadus. Tornadus doesn't really care about the Skulls that Gastrodon could go for, and uh, could even pack Knock off if it wants to. And again, just reading the uh, switch and just making his best play, because it doesn't matter if Gastrodon stays in. If it does, you go Clefable, you wish up. Allows him to get in Heat Run right now, and uh, Gondra uh, doubles right back out into Tornadus as the own heat is going to come out so again he's just making the best possible play um not wanting to go for magma storms because he does have limited magma storms so scissor could actually become a problem if well there's two ways that scissor could become a problem uh if he misses enough magma storms or runs out of uh, magma storms or if scald does not burn sd scissor actually has a chance of beating uh Gondra's team so not wanting to waste them right there he basically goes back out into uh, Heat Ran right now, and he actually goes for the uh, Earth Power of his own, expecting something like Heat Ran to want to come in, and that was a beautiful play. His own Heat Ran's gone. That means when Magastorm comes out, it is uh, gonna claim a KO. Now this, that is a huge miss. That is an absolutely huge miss. Great play on Trasco's part, going for Zen Headbutt. Um, he kind of again had to. I don't know if it actually did 39% to Heat Ran, but even if it didn't, that was still his best play right there. I feel too, because if you catch the Clefable upon switching. You basically get to go for Hyper Z's Fury, and you force a KO. And at that point, Gondra needs all four of these Pokemon. He needs Heat Ran to Wall Scizor. He needs Clefable uh, to Wall Gastrodon. Though Tornadus can do it, so he doesn't need it as much. Um, Gastrodon is the glue that's holding everything together. Walls Coco, Walls Scizor to an extent, or pressures it with Scald. So that miss was really, really, really huge. And uh, it... That hurt just a lot because I would have been able to do a KO. So he switches out into his top of Coco right there. Um, just as as Gondra throws off a Moonblast because uh, Hoopa is in range. And he's able to go right back out into Gastrodon. And just again, just throw off an Earthquake. Like it really doesn't matter at that point. Uh, that miss really did suck. I'm not that, There's no sugarcoating that. That miss sucked. Scissor comes in. Takes the Earthquake. At that point, Scissor is forced to roost. So this does allow Gondra to throw off a Scald. And the second Scald is going to end up burning the Scissor right there. So... That means that Tornadus can come out, take a hit if it needs to, uh, even defog away the rocks just because his own heat run is gone. And defog is actually a smart play because that means Tornadus never has to... One, it means Magma Storm has a, a high chance to hit. Two, uh, he's running Rocky Helmet uh, Tornadus, which we just figured out right there. And three, he doesn't have to come in anymore. Like, he'll be at full with Regenerator. So, Coco comes out, goes for a last-ditch effort, trying to, like, 
a prediction right there, trying to just go for Voltage, trying to see if the um, if he would double and you know Tornadoes would go for U-turn. But at this point, Ganja doesn't have to predict at all. He doesn't. Why throw away a matchup? It's a winnable matchup right now. Why predict? So he gets Inco Fable. Um, as Kofable is just going to go for a wish. This will allow Heatran to potentially come out too. And without Electric Terrain, Tapu Koko does not threaten Clef at all. So he can wish up, get up his rocks, which will be pressuring Hoopa, which will be pressuring Scizor and whatnot, as Scizor is going to come out. As Kofable is going to go for a wish. And on that turn in particular, as Scizor comes out, that basically means either Tornadus can come out. Um, and the reason he goes Tornadus there, by the way, guys, over Heatran, even though it was the freest wish pass to Heatran, is because if Trosco U turn right there, uh, and got in Hoopa versus Tren, it still picked up a KO because Bandit Hyperspace Fury is a ridiculous threat. So Gondra makes the really smart play, has a Rocky Helmet anyway, and Scissors Burnt, just his best play, and uh, goes Tornadus right there just to not allow Hoopa to want to come out. Doesn't allow Hoopa to come out. So Tornadus is back at full, Koko comes out. Again, can go right back out to Gastrodon. Gastrodon is really, honestly, the MVP of this match. As Trasa goes for Thunderbolt right there, and this does allow Gastrodon to go for Earthquake on the incoming Gastro. Again, while this guy, that's pretty much all Trosser's Gastrodon has done the entire time was land one Toxic off on Tornadus and has not been able to do anything else. So Tornadus comes out and Tornadus can just go for U-turn if it wants to. Opts to go for Hurricane this turn uh, just because Top Coco that low. No, it's not that low, but it, it still does more to Scizor if Scizor wants to come out. Um, guess the confusion, but at that point, like I understand where Trosco is coming from right here. Uh, just because, again, that Zen Headbutt miss was huge. But at that point, I don't think it matters as much. Because I don't think Gashadon could do it at all. Yeah, Gashadon really would not be able to do it. At this point, I think Trosco is running or fighting a losing battle. So, right back out. Doubles out to Tornadus as the Hoopa comes out. Again, he's just making the best play possible. Um, no reason to stay in. He has Regenerator. Can't do crap to him. Gets to bring it back in. And goes for U-turn one more time. As Coco comes out. And this does give the Gashadon another Earthquake. And at that point, uh, even if Coco switches... Even if Coco switches, like Gashon is potentially two KO and outsped. Uh, Scizor comes out. He can go route to Heatran right here because uh, Scizor is going to go for the um, Roost. And Gondra actually just decides to go for, um, I think it was a Magma Storm or Earth Power right here. Goes for Earth Power, which actually does not do crap. <laughs> that Earth Power doesn't do crap to Gashon. Uh, and Trosco actually scouts for the uh, Tectonic Rage right there because that would be the only thing that knock him out. And if he does go for it, then Gastrodon can come out and uh, potentially recover. So really good stout. It actually ends up being Inferno Overdrive and not Tectonic Rage. So Hoopa can come out and pretty much claim a KO as Gastrodon is going to come out. It makes sense that he sat Gastrodon. By the way, that Gastrodon died. <laughs> that boy got blown away. It makes sense that he sat Gastrodon at that point. Gastrodon was literally there to burn Scizor, wall his own Gastrodon, and basically beat Coco and Heatran. And with both of them gone, Gastrodon is the most expendable member. He can easily go right back out into Tornadus and just go for U-Turn. And U-Turn covers every switch. Uh, actually goes for Knockoff, which is smart too. Because it would still knock out Gastrodon as well as Hoopa. And does enough to Scizor. And as he does miss a hurricane right here, I don't think again, I don't think that matters too 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 much. Because at that point, even if the even if um even if Gondra is down to two Pokemon, as long as he has Heat Ram plus Tornadus alive, I think he still wins. So um throws off a hurricane right here. Just so much. So much to Scizor. And at the same time, it's also wasting his roost. Now at this point. At this point, Chosco ends up going for bullet punch on the expected U-turn. Uh, as opposed to going for U-turn on his own, as Heat Rain is going to come out. But like I said, at this point, man, Scizor is so low. Uh, Trost is just going off the Magma Storm misses, but uh, Gondra doesn't even have to go for them because it's not Spid F Scizor. Nobody runs Spid F Scizor in this day and age. They run Fizz Def because of all the giant physical threats, man. So basically, all he has to do is keep clicking this Earth Power. Earth Power will 2 KO everything. Uh, it will also be able to knock out the... Um, the Hoopa, Trosco does read the Magma Storm right there, uh, trying to waste another PP. Hoopa can come out, and at that point, all you got to do is sack Clefable, because it doesn't do anything. Uh, we do see the Zen Headbutt come out, and it does do 55%. So, it really, really did suck that he missed it earlier. As uh, Trosco is going to go out into his Scizor right there, as opposed to going for the double, um, double Zen Headbutt. I think he went Scizor, because if, if he knocked out Clef... Tornadus just came in, went for U-turn, knocked out Hoopa, and just allowed him to get in the Heatran. And if we actually go back to the last turn, um, if we actually go back to Scizor's HP, uh, plus U-turn plus Burnt, Earth Power doing 31, eh, I mean, either way, he still has to dodge a Magma Storm, right? So this just allows the Clefable to go for a Wish, can go right back out on the Heatran no matter what right now. It doesn't matter if he U-turns out to Hoopa, because Hoopa literally has one switch in left. Heatran going back up to 99, Scizor has Bullet Punch and U-turn to hit him, so it's not... 
a threat, and he does end up landing the Magma Storm. He really had to hope that Magma Storm just repeatedly missed as he was able to get plus six. And even then, I don't think he could beat uh, uh, Hiran 1v1 just because Clefable could wish past Hiran. Hiran only had to spam Earth Powers. Once it got a Spadef drop, it got two a KO. Tornadus always had the Rocky Helmet as well, and you can only get up to a certain amount when burnt. Like, you don't end up going back up to plus six if you go for plus six when you're burnt. There's a, there's a cap limit. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, Gondra ended up winning. I think he had the matchup. I think he played it. Uh, he played it as well as he needed to. And I think Trosco definitely didn't catch a, a lucky break, man. Like, hitting that Zen head. But he made some really aggressive plays with Hoopa, which is really nice. Because it would allow him to break through Gondra's team. So, that was really nice. Um, and I understand his frustration as well. Because, it, you know, it's the finals of... Uh, it's the finals of a tournament, so you, you got to feel for the boy. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this commentary. Hope I didn't butcher it too much. Uh, it was definitely an enjoyable match to watch. Um, the replay of anyway. And um, yeah, of course, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Give me your thoughts on the game. And I'll, catch, uh, I'll check you guys later. Also, 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 for people that keep asking, I said I'm going to use my, you know, my Miltank Gladios intro because it's a little bit more serious on tournament games, Road Top 10, things like that. And then my fun Whitney intro. Uh, on you know lives and just fun stuff like that so just just to explain for the people that you know this is me officially making that statement so also if you guys want to pick up drop of drago socks like i said two days left link is down below catch y'all later goodbye friends